Hi, Dr. Ariane from The Movement Paradigm. Today we're going to talk a little bit about foot function, specifically the big toe, aka the first MPG or metatarsal phalangeal joint. As Dr. Emily Splickle would say, the big toe is our linchpin in movement efficiency. It is something that is so vital for us to be able to transfer force efficiently, prevent injury, and move with fluidity, with grace, and hopefully continue to age gracefully as we get older. So with the big toe, let's kind of talk about some of the uh, pathologies that can present. So one of the things that we often see is big toe arthritis. So we will have arthritis in this metatarsal and this is the first phalangeal joint right in here we can have something that is self-fuse so arthritis can progress and then ultimately it can a joint can self-fuse you could have a fused toe because you've had pain for a while you could have a bunion where in this case you lose stability in this uh, metatarsal cuneiform joint here and so this metatarsal will swing out and create this positioning here of the big toe and that creates a bunion so ultimately a bunion over time because you're not using it in its normal joint position can cause a lot of pain if we're thinking about the joint position itself we want to think about any joint in the body we want to have maintain this really nice center axis that's called joint centration so when we're thinking about optimal movement of the toe it should be in a nice alignment right so if we had a bunion and this was turned this was positioned outward and this was positioned inward that would not be optimal alignment for the joint over time which would typically cause pain or some type of dysfunction so let's talk a little bit about the biomechanics of this joint okay so we have when we are moving what we want to happen is we have this it's called a slide glide and jam so what happens is is when we're moving the toe so let's think we're walking and we're going to push off in our gait cycle we have a slide glide and then jam and with this slide glide jam if there's anything that's missing for, for example if the glide is missing then it will jam too early jam 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 where does that glide come from it comes from this first metatarsal here so the metatarsal has to go down for us to be able to glide properly if it doesn't move it doesn't go down that's called plantar flexion then what happens is it just jams okay and again that ultimately will cause some type of pathology so it's really important as we're thinking about big toe function because it's so important in the body it's so imp imperative in movement especially dynamic activity like walking at our most basic level we can think of stairs we can think of lunging we could think of running or jumping but really all of our dynamic activity is going to be driven by how well we are able to move this toe now what affects this glide is quite interesting Stain. We actually have this spiraling pattern that happens in our foot or should happen. So when we're striking the ground, we're more here. And then as we were on in an inverted position, and then when we come into our uh, mid stance when we're straight up and down our foot is neutral but it's moving in through the plane of what we call eversion so it's moving here and then when we go to push off again it locks in this rigid position again in this inverted position so our foot is always spiraling which is really cool because that's what affects our spiraling all the way up the chain in our entire body if we have some dysfunction in this spiraling pattern, that is going to influence how this toe, how this, this uh, first metatarsal is gliding. Because we have, I'm sure, you know, somebody, you may have heard of shin splits. So that muscle is called the anterior tibialis. That is going to attach right here. So that, as well as our peroneal longus that comes around the bottom attaches here so we have this really cool stirrup on the foot and if there's any dysfunction in that stirrup in that spiraling pattern then that's going to affect how this is gliding so the take-home message is this number one is that your big toe is extremely important in your movement if you are limited in range of motion, so we need 30 degrees of motion just for walking we need a normal is about uh, 60 degrees 
I can't really do this with this model, but uh, 90 degrees is going to be to wear high heels. If you don't have that, well, first, if you don't have 90 degrees, then don't wear high heels. Um, but you can, if you do wear high heels, you can expect that it may hurt. So you want to have optimal range of motion for at least for walking. So we need 30 degrees for that. So it's super important in how we're going to wind up the plantar fascia and generate force through the body. So that's number one, realizing how important the big toe is. <laughs> number two is if you have some pathology, recognize that it's really important to address why you have the pathology so it does not continue to persist. And then number three, of course, is trying to identify your root causes of this pattern that you might be experiencing. Why is your toe stiffer over time? Why do you have toe pain, for example? What is the reason behind that? And from that perspective, I can't get through this in this video, but we really want to look at the whole body and look at how the pelvis is moving. How are we rotating? How are we rotating? Do we have the mobility in the foot and the ankle and the calf to be able to actually spiral properly? So looking at the those root causes. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like and a share. And of course, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Movement Paradigm, for weekly tips on mindset, nutrition, and movement.